So I've always believed that in order for us to understand the universe and how everything out there works, we also have to understand our own biology. And specifically, we have to understand ourselves. For example, in order to understand extraterrestrial intelligence, we obviously have to understand what intelligence is. And in order to understand intelligence, we have to start with our own brain, which we already know is extremely complex, especially in human beings. And so by studying the brain, parts of the brain, and specifically different neurons and the connections they make, we might one day be able to explain a lot of other things around the universe. But at the moment, where we are right now, we're still basically in the infancy of understanding all of this. And, well, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be discussing some of the recent discoveries in regards to neurons, in order for us to hopefully one day understand the connections they make and the intelligence that ends up being formed as a result, i.e. us. And what I wanted to do in this video, which is probably going to be a little bit longer, is just go through some of the bigger discoveries in regards to neurons, even though there were actually hundreds, if not thousands of different discoveries in the last few years, focusing on some of the bigger and more unusual findings, the ones that really push the boundary of our understanding. And mostly because in the last few years, several studies have already shown that we actually have a bit of a misconception about our own brain and about neurons that form it. And let's start right here with the most recent discovery that I've briefly discussed in one of the posts on YouTube, with a short video right here showing us what this discovery is about. This is a formation of a single memory in a rat, or in more scientific terms, a single engram. Engram in this case represents some kind of a memory formation. Now it's very difficult to directly explain what this memory is, but it's something to do with some kind of a fear of being shocked or zapped inside a cage with every single dot you see right here representing a neuron firing in various regions of the brain. Which in this case the scientists were able to create by using a genetic engineering technique that turns certain cells fluorescent and essentially they made the neurons sort of light up and were able to then see where they're firing, creating the image and the video you see right here. And what they discovered is that a single memory, or a single engram in this case, was actually created by 117 different parts of the rat's brain, including various regions that were never believed to be involved in memory formation or in recall. Which suggests that even in a relatively small rat's brain, every single memory and potentially every single idea is extremely complex and will usually involve millions and possibly even billions of different neurons in various locations of the brain. Although in this case, it's quite possible that the reason so many different regions were involved is because this memory was somewhat traumatic. I mean, we're talking about being zapped by electricity, which would obviously produce a lot of undesirable recall in a typical rat. And so by having so many different areas involved in a single memory formation and storage, it's quite possible that it becomes much easier to reactivate this memory later on. So definitely not something we expected when it comes to memory. But that's of course just the beginning. When it comes to human brain, it gets a little bit more complex. Like way, way more complex. This is something you can find in the description below and it was actually made by Google. This is a Google Neuron Map. And this is a map produced by using a tiny piece of a brain from a 45 year old woman who actually had epilepsy and had this part removed and would later donate this part to science. And this is a part from the area known as left hippocampus. The part that you can kind of see in this image right here, this is just a slice of it. And interestingly enough, if we were to compare this to the mouse brain I showed you previously, it's approximately 1000 times smaller. But by comparing the mouse brain to the human brain, we'd also realize that the human brain is approximately 1000 times bigger and more complex. So in essence, this represents one millionth part of the human brain. And what you're looking at right here are 50,000 different brain cells that even though it's somewhat difficult to see, actually make approximately 130 million connections that we usually refer to as synapses, all together representing roughly around 1.4 petabytes of data, about a thousand times more than a typical modern PC. And because of this ridiculous complexity, even to date the scientists haven't actually studied everything here and are literally only scratching the surface. But this is the first time in history that such a tremendously powerful and complex brain map has actually been constructed using human brain, representing a tremendous achievement for the science known as connectomics, the science of brain mapping. 
And just by doing the data analysis on this tiny piece of brain, the scientists have already calculated that the total amount of data that could be technically stored in a human brain represents the total amount of data from the entire planet Earth created in a single year. So our brains do actually have quite a lot of capacity. While also discovering that certain neurons had quite a lot of different types of connections. For example, certain neurons would only have one or two connections, but some neurons would actually connect up to 20 times to a different neuron, suggesting that they would result in the neuron firing every single time. And because all of this is believed to be connected to memory and recall, certain memories and certain recall is obviously a lot more complex than we initially thought. Although we do have to remember that this was also a part of a patient suffering from epilepsy, so it could be maybe related to the epilepsy as well. Then, a few months ago, there was another unusual discovery in regards to human neurons compared to neurons of other animals. With the picture right here representing some of the neurons from rats, guinea pigs, rabbits, different types of monkeys, and humans. And previously it's always been assumed that neurons, at least for the most part, would probably be the same across different species. Especially in the way that they communicate with each other, and especially in the way that they transfer different signals. And today we understand quite well that pretty much all neurons and all animals will usually transfer electrical signals or electrical impulses by using what's known as ion channels. A type of a gate that allows different types of ions, specifically potassium and sodium, to go through in order to create electrical current inside neurons. And so previously, up until now, it's always been assumed that the number of ion channels is for the most part more or less the same across different species. But turns out humans are completely different. Turns out that human neurons have much smaller number of ion channels compared to other animals. Which the scientists believe might be one of the reasons why the human brain evolved to operate more efficiently, allowing it to save different resources and becoming a lot more productive by reducing the number of ion channels, but also by increasing its size. And so by having less ion channels inside neurons, it now has more energy to spend elsewhere, such as, for example, in producing other neurons. And so in most species, as the neurons increase in size, normally you get a kind of a linear progression in terms of the ion channels. But humans were completely different. For some reason, the density of ion channels was much lower compared to every other mammalian species. Which could be one of the explanations for why we were able to develop complex intelligence after all. But we'll actually discuss some other ideas about this in one of the future videos, so make sure to subscribe. Then we had this other recent study that you can find in the description as well, that focused on comparing machine learning to typical computations inside a human neuron. Revealing once again that we sort of underestimated how complex human neurons are. Now today, in artificial intelligence, pretty much most neural networks are based on a somewhat similar principle. The principle of interconnection of different hidden layers and having several inputs usually producing some kind of an output. This is usually referred to as deep neural network and these ideas today are based on the model known as perceptron model initially proposed back in the 50s by neuroscientists who back then only started studying various neurons and obviously did not understand how complex neurons really are. And so the scientists in the study trained an artificial intelligence network to try to compute as a single neuron, biological neuron, discovering that in the process, in order to recreate activity of a single human neuron, you would actually require between five and eight different layers, representing something way more complex than the scientists initially thought. Which of course suggests that biological processes inside our brain are way more complex than any neural network produced to date. And in this case, their model of a neuron was able to successfully predict firing of this neuron approximately 99% of the time. And this was an 8-layer network. Anything lower than 8 layers would not work. Here's roughly what the entire model looked like, according to the scientists in this paper. And by comparing this to a typical artificial neural network, or basically deep learning network, in this case, we can sort of assume that a single biological cell, a single neuron, would be roughly equivalent to approximately a thousand artificial neurons. Which obviously means that we're still pretty far from being able to recreate actual artificial intelligence by using modern computers and modern deep learning. But to add to the complexity of all of this, turns out that neurons don't just use impulses and electric signals to communicate different types of memories. A recent discovery also suggests that there is also something else going on 
with what you see right here known as the ARC protein created by what's known as an ARC gene. With this image right here showing us what happens to the activity of this protein in a rat's brain that's undergoing different types of training and is essentially learning. And what the scientists recently discovered is that, well, first of all, ARC gene seems to act like a typical virus. And for all we know, it might have even evolved from a virus. But in essence, it creates what's known as a capsid, extremely similar to a typical virus, and then appears to move around between different neurons, and is potentially able to transfer actual genetic information from a single neuron to another neuron, to some extent representing a kind of a memory transfer. And at the moment it's not entirely clear how any of this is done and what exactly it does inside the brain, but it does suggest that certain types of memories and certain types of, I guess, ideas or thoughts could also be transferred through the unusual capsid known as ARC protein that seems to mimic the behavior of a typical virus. Now, it obviously doesn't mean yet that we can take someone's brain and transfer it to someone else's brain using this, but the actual genetic information from a single neuron could be potentially transferred to a different neuron, or at least from one neuron to another neuron, and at least a part of the genetic code, possibly not the whole genetic code. But exactly what this does to the brain and the formation of memories is not really understood just yet. And I guess last but not least, there was also a new type of a neuron discovered, this time not in the brain, but inside a typical eye cell. A neuron known as the Campana cell that you see right here seems to be located in, seems to be responsible for connecting different types of rod and cone receptors, and seems to be responsible for relaying different types of signals between different types of photoreceptors inside a typical retina of an eye. With the cell known as the Campana cell that you see right here being this new discovery. And in this case, it suggests that the vision and the way that we receive information through vision also seems to have its own new layer of memory processing. In this case, following the stimulation, a lot of these neuronal cells stay activated for up to 30 seconds and will then actually influence these signals that are processed further on. Although their true nature and exactly what they do in the eye is still not really clear because it's a relatively recent discovery. And there were actually a lot more discoveries on top of that. But because this video is already pretty long, I'm going to mention them and a lot of other discoveries in regards to human brain in some of the future videos as well. For now, I guess that's kind of all I wanted to mention. And from all of these studies, there's really only one conclusion. Human brain, and specifically human neurons and different types of neurons, are way, way more complex than we ever thought. But even today, after decades of research, we're actually still only scratching the surface and we're still far from answering the question of what exactly human intelligence is and are thus still pretty far from being able to understand what alien intelligence is, or if it's out there, or if it actually exists. But by studying every single individual piece and by getting more information about the brain as a whole, one day we might be able to answer all of these questions. And once we do, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. So on that note, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support the show on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.